And welcome to the studios here at Triple H 100.1 FM. You are listening to Alexi Boyd and Small Biz Matters. And boy, have we got an awesome show for you today. Those of you, know who, those of you who know me regularly will know that um, sometimes I'm kind of in a bit of a tracksuit pants kind of look. I might have my Ugg boots on because this is, of course, Hornsby in the north of Sydney, not the eastern suburbs. <laughs> but today we are discussing quite a poignant issue for lots of people, which is actually what we look like when when we're online. So whether it's face-to-face or digital, first impressions actually do matter. There's a multitude of times in our professional lives, for personal even for that matter, where we can be judged in an instant. It's not mean, it's just human nature. Interviews, pitching, networking, speaking, meeting, bumping into other colleagues means at any point in time you might be in control of your image before the other person thinks of it for you. So how do you want to be remembered after the first impression presents itself? What can you do to make sure sure that you come across exactly as intended. Your dress, your presentation, your voice, and it all adds up. And all those same rules apply in this weird digital world in which we live as professionals right now. Jennifer Austin is an image expert on vi- visual presentation and first impression management in her role as an image consultant, coach, trainer, lecturer, and speaker. She regularly helps individuals and businesses to make the most of that first impression moment, whether it's on Online or in person. Welcome to the program, Jennifer. Nope, it's not working. Talk for me again, Jennifer. Hi, good hey, morning, I got you. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> now, let me start that again. Welcome to the program, first of all. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are, of course, on LinkedIn Live. So anybody who's listening on LinkedIn Live, um, don't you just love community radio and all of those fabulous elements that come with being live to air? Jennifer, thanks for joining us today. It's um, it's a weird world that we live in, and it's a really important facet of what how we're existing at the moment that we all need to be conscious of. And I'm not just talking about us as professionals, but in fact, the way that we present ourselves maybe to family and friends. Why is that so important right now, do you think? Well, thanks again for having me, um, Alexi. I'm glad to be here. First impression is everything. Think about it. When um, you meet somebody for the first time, you create a mental image in your head. Like right now, everybody's watching me LinkedIn they already have decided whether they like me or not. That's based on my hair, my tone of voice, my posture, um, my makeup. So our human brain is wired this way. We We make snap judgment based on what we see right away in a in a in a second as what they say between seven to 30 seconds. It's pretty amazing. And and I guess we're all used to that fact when we're going to perhaps a networking meeting when you might walk into the room, you know that you're going to be judged. I think particularly as females, we're conscious of that. A second generation of corporate women uh, coming through the ranks and, you know, our, our mothers were incredible trailblazers in this way and having to almost jostle their way through male testosterone filled rooms to, to make sure they were heard. We've moved beyond that, I hope. But it's still, you're still conscious of that first impression when you walk into a room. Ignoring online for the moment, can you just give us a few nice broad top tips on the best way to make a first impression in terms of your physicality when, when, when making that impression in, in a physical sense? But in a physical sense, that's basically your personal presentation. So um, what you're wearing. So what color is it? What style? Um, are you wearing makeup? Um, how does your hair look like? Is it um, greasy or is it blow dried? Um, even your grooming habits, your fingernails, are they trim? So, and then even how you stand, your posture, are you slouching? You're coming. Every, everything you're saying now, I'm just readjusting it, <laughs> checking it all. There are, there are certain um, body language, as we call it, nonverbal cues, to really come across in a very confident manner and also engaging. Um, Things like even eye contact, we underestimate this um, specific nonverbal cue. But having an eye contact really makes the other feel, make the other person feel like you're engaged, you're interested. Um, even your hands, where do you put your hands when you meet somebody? Are they, or are they open? 
It, it is it is an important point, actually, because I, you think about that posture and if someone were to, you know, that first impression, they walk into a room, they might be, maybe they're fiddling with something or they're slouching or they're looking a little bit uncomfortable. Um, instantly, you peg them in terms of their personality, not just professionalism, but actually how they are feeling. It's an incredible instinct that we have to judge someone and judge their emotions the moment we see them as well. Um, and, and I guess all those things are so important. Can I ask you, though, playing devil's advocate in that first impression, you, you know, you walk up to someone and you immediately have that first conversation, and that's a very important moment as well. Can you be overconfident? Can you be overly arrogant? What are some no-nos when it comes to having those face-to-face conversations that you should avoid to not look like a twat? <laughs> <laughs> We all have been there. I think it's a conscious effort to really be mindful of how we want to come across because sometimes we're not sometimes feeling great. So if we're not feeling great, I mean, that energy transmit, you know, you can come across angry, but really you just had a bad day or maybe um, you're talking loud and that could come across arrogant. So it's really um, before going into these um, interaction, whether that's going to an interview or going to a conference room, um, mentally um, think to yourself, okay, I want to have a great attitude. I want to have a great posture. So, you know, things like that. Or even thinking about your handshake. Um, One study has said that some 70% of people are not confident in giving a proper handshake. So, um, Having a handshake, having a proper handshake sets the tone as well. So if you were in a rush and just had given your hand um, and pulled it out, I mean, that comes across as arrogant or even giving a soft handshake. What does that mean? That can come across insecure or disinterested. So I I think it's psychologically uh, thinking to yourself, how do I want to come across it's all about perception. Yeah, and, and I agree that it, it is how do I want to come across in this situation because sometimes you need to come across as the person who's in power in that, in that scenario, whereas other times you want to say, okay, I'm here to meet you, I'm here on your terms, I'm here on your turf, and I'm, I'm here to listen to you. And I guess you need to convey that. That's a, that's a lot of almost... Um, processing that needs to go from your mind, from your emotion, down through your body and into your hand. It's a lot to do. And I guess it does take a lot of practice, doesn't it? It does. And it's not something that we were taught at home or even in school. I mean, these are the things that we really pay attention to and we're not conscious of, conscious of it. We meet somebody for the first time. We're not um, really just looking at what they're saying or the tone of their voice. Um, we're also looking at their body language and how that is being presented. Because at the end of the day, we want to be right. We want to come across credible. We want to come across confident. So there are simple things that you can do so you can manage that perception and really control the image that you're trying to communicate to the person that you're meeting. So let's fast forward to the reality, the crazy reality that we live in at the moment where everything is online. I mean, we thought everything was online before. Boy, did we not want to know what was coming. And here we are finding ourselves uh, meeting for the first time face to face through a screen. Could you explain to me what changes about that? Obviously, we're not shaking hands, but is there any real significant change between how you present yourself in a face to face meeting versus an online meeting? I think, you know, if I think about it, it's actually quite the same. The only difference is you're not physically present, but you are still meeting that person. And in your, and we are wired this way where we just make an initial first impression when we meet somebody for the first time. So like, for instance, I'm speaking to you on screen. Where's my eyes going? Am I looking the other way or am I looking at you? Or even just my, um, my posture. Am I slouching when I'm talking to you? So these are all the things that that I think we need to pay attention to. So we are giving the right positive first impression or even what we're wearing. What are we wearing? Are we wearing something too distracting, you know, big prints or big collar or even like jewelry, for instance, is there like, that could also be another thing where if you are wearing 
big earrings, big necklace, that can be quite distracting because we want to focus on the person, what they're saying. Yeah, and, and that's so important, isn't it? Because instead of being able to use our peripheral vision um, to take in a lot more than just their face, quite often the screen is fo- Oops. the screen is focusing in on their face and uh, you need to remove those distractions from around you. So this is where I think people need to give a little bit of thought to things like their positioning on the screen. I haven't done this particularly well today because um, I've got to sort of factor in all this other equipment that I've got to use. But if I was doing it properly, you know, I'd I'd have my I'd have my screen closer. I'd have make sure that my 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 face took up, you know, most of the screen. And there's the rule of thirds that you've got when you're doing a, when you're like, I just can't do it today with all this stuff everywhere. But it, it is something that you need to be conscious of. And this is where if you're going in for a really important meeting, this is where the, um, you know, checking things out beforehand, opening up Zoom and looking at your background before you go live is actually quite useful. Are there any other tips that you can give for what you can do to make sure that um, you're positioning, literally positioning yourself on the screen uh, or looking at lighting before you go live into that conversation? Absolutely. You've mentioned the lighting and the positioning like um, um, with your cameras. Well, you want to make sure your eye level, so you don't want it to be too high or too low. So, and looking at the camera, not looking to, looking at the screen, but looking at the camera. When you're looking there, it looks like you're speaking to the person. Mm. And even your hands is what they say. Based on research, we want to show our hands because when they're hidden, it looks like we're hiding something. Yes, so that's very true. Gesture. So we gesture, you come across more calm and trustworthy. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying there because <laughs> look, I automatically, automatically bring up my hands. It's true and it also, I guess, it fills up the screen with more of your body so you're not just a floating head in that scenario. Uh, so lighting, um, I know one of the things that was um, suggested to me was if you have a desk lamp sitting around the house, uh, put the desk lamp behind your monitor, that throws up some light up the wall so the wall, so the light is not all down lights because down lights make you look very long in the face. And But make sure, and this was a tip that came from my husband, make sure the light bulb that's in the desk lamp is, you know how you can have cool or warm these days? Make right, sure it yeah. matches what's up the top because otherwise you've got warm light coming on your face and then cool down, cool, coming down, and that's not going to quite work. And the other important thing, of course, is, um, you know, where, where your position, your head is positioned, which we've talked about as well, but also uh, not having those distractions. Look what's behind you. Is it a total mess if you've got kids doing schoolwork yeah. in the background? <laughs> is all of their stuff still there from the last time they were using your office as a, uh, you know, as their own personal classroom? So it's all those sort of things, checking it all out beforehand and almost taking a picture, if you like, and then really examining right. what's there behind you. And I think that's so important because we're kind of, we are getting a bit lazy as the time's dragging on. <laughs> People are, and, but I, can I just say something about back, background screens? I hate background screens. I don't like them. I think they, they take away the genuine nature of who we are online. What do you think about having all those silly background screens behind us of being in Hawaii and stuff like that? <laughs> I guess it depends on your audience, you know. If you're obviously in a more creative industry, um, having a background screen would probably um, add to to um, to the ambience or to um, to just your whole environment. But I would say a clean background is better because you can really focus on the person, you know, that you're speaking to. Um, the other thing that I want to add as well is smile smile when you're when you're actually talking to somebody you know um it transmits good energy and openness and engagement yeah it's a, it's an accessory that we all forget but it's an invitation what about the issue of eye contact how can i have an eye contact with a with a computer screen why is that so important i mean if i look down here at myself and i talk to myself you can see that i'm talking to that side or if i talk to that side i'm talking to that side but if i actually look at the camera is that where we should be aiming for when we're having these conversations which is hard Absolutely. I mean, think about it. If I was speaking to you and I was looking that way, how do I come across? What is your first impression of me? That you're not talking to me, that you're looking past me, that you're not having a conversation with me, but with someone else. 
Exactly. I'm not interested. And um, and nobody wants to be talking to somebody wherein the other person's not interested. You don't feel uh, welcome. You, you feel like the person's not engaged. So what's going to happen when you feel that person's not engaged? You just tune out. Mm. So you want to make the other person feel like you are there with them. And again, if it's a first encounter, you have to nail that first impression. Very. If you don't nail it, the next 20 minutes will really be hard. Very so true. You, if you nail the first 7, 30 seconds, it will be easier to establish your rapport. It will be easier to pitch yourself, um, develop a really deep connection. So master the first 27 to 30 seconds, and the next 20 minutes will be so much easier. You're listening to Triple H here in 100.1 FM live on the radio with Small Biz Matters. And today I am speaking with Jennifer Austin, who is a personal stylist, but an expert in first impressions. We're going to take a quick break here on Triple H. And when we come back, I want to talk to Jennifer about that all important uh, moment when you start talking. What's some great um, opening lines that you can have in this strange online meeting world that we live in? You're listening to Triple H 100.1 FM. We'll be back after this. Now, today we are speaking with our lovely guest, Jennifer Austin, who is an expert in personal presentation, those first impressions, and really nailing that moment where you first come into contact with everyone else. Because as we said before the break here on Triple H 100.1 FM, we were talking about why those first few seconds are so crucial when it comes to meeting and greeting and getting to know someone else. So we were talking about what you can do to uh, improve your online presence, those first impressions when you're online, how you're, how everything is positioned. But Jennifer, I'd like to talk to you now about... Um, those those first few moments of conversation when we joined together on our on our meeting online you immediately commented on how comfortable I looked and uh, what my studio looked like is that a technique to get people to feel at ease immediately with a conversation absolutely because what your environment looks like and how you dress can really make the other person feel comfortable yeah control that and you know, obviously, the dress, the the the, the grooming, um, the hair, the, the positioning on the screen—that's all very important. But what you say initially in this first moment of a meeting online, do you think it's more important that we give some thought to how to open a conversation online than we do face-to-face -face meetings? Do you think it's more important? I think it's actually the same. So, um, opening lines, as um, as you said, it will it will really be based on. Who are you meeting and what is it about? So you have to think about, are you seeing a client for the first time? You know, um, what, are you, what, what are you trying to achieve in that first encounter? As, again, based on, based on this research, Albert Meherebian, I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, he did a research on face-to-face -face communication and he had said there's three components of communication. So 7% is words, 38% is tonality, and 55% is visual presentation. So think about that. So those first encounter is really about nonverbal cues and the tone of the voice. We pay too much attention to what we say in that first encounter. We actually don't really hear what they're saying. What we're hearing more is what their posture is saying, their facial expression, what they're wearing, the clothes, the hair. The tone of the voice, is it high pitch, low pitch, fast, or slow? So when you're about to open your mouth, yes, I think it is uh, what could be the opening lines. Something, you know, um, I guess complimenting, um, but you can really uh, manage the tone of your voice. How do you use that so you can make a good first impression? Do you think the tone of our voice has become more important online because we've lost that uh, human contact, that face-to-face -face connect, uh, sorry, the face-to-face -face connectivity of, of a handshake? Maybe the discussion or what we're saying and the tone of our voice becomes that online handshake, if you will, where they can uh, immediately physically judge you, for want of a better word, when they, when they first see you on the screen. Do you think that it's taken the place of the handshake? 
Well, I think it's it could be because now um, as much as nonverbal cues are important, you still see the person on screen based on what, what, what sort of body language are you seeing. So there's no handshake that could be replaced with the tone of voice. But think about it. There are certain voices that you hear and you feel calm. And there are certain voices that you feel agitated and anxious. So based on one study, um, they had said that high-pitched voice and a question on the end doesn't come across confident. So um, having a voice of not too high, not too low, but just in the middle, that, you know, um, perfect pitch like you have, I think you've got a very great voice. Um, You are in this industry and the tone and even the way you articulate the words, it's very clear. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, that comes with six years of hearing yourself through the headphones and being very conscious of what your voice sounds like and the tempo, I think, the speed at which you talk you mentioned before is very important as well because we often speak very quickly, particularly as females, and when you slow down the pace of your voice, it gives your brain the opportunity to hear back and process quickly what you're saying so you can think ahead and think of those new words. It's kind of like uh, when we were kids and teenagers and if you're one of those kids who used to you know, eat books and love reading – you knew that your brain was reading ahead of the the line. You'd be reading 10 words ahead and your brain is still seeing, uh, your brain is still processing the words, 10 words behind that, if you know what I mean. That's kind of like what we can do with our voice if we train ourselves to slow it down, think about what we're going to say before we say it while we're talking. There's a real skill in that, I think. That's That's an important point. And something that we can all practice when we're first meeting with someone. There's nothing wrong with practicing the tone of your voice in front of a mirror as well. Um, I, exactly. want to, I want to talk about one thing that you are particularly an expert in and, and one only has to look at your LinkedIn profile and the way that you position yourself online. It's a great, actually a great example for the way females in particular and men uh, can show a very professional um, presence uh, in all of their branding, which is great. Can you talk me through what are some really good wardrobe essentials? Because I had a personal stylist come and help me about uh, a year ago. And my God, I didn't realize how desperately I needed one until I had one. And I looked fabulous. But more importantly, I felt fabulous and the clothes fit and they represented my personality as well. Can you tell me some essentials of what people can look for when um, when we go back to the world of shopping uh, with their wardrobe and first impressions? So there are some key essentials that I would normally tell my clients to have in their wardrobe that I think that will never outdate. And you always come across professional, like for women, um, a blazer, a suit jacket, you can never go wrong with that. Going for an interview, having that on, um, having that in the office just in case you might see a client, um, black pencil skirt, you can um, wear that to work and you can wear it on the weekend. Never goes out of style. Not too short, not too long. I'd probably say the shortest you can go is probably two inches above the knee. Um, black slacks, a white button shirt, um, a, a, a blouse. What you're wearing, you're actually wearing some sort of like a silk feminine blouse. Um, black pumps. Again, in a work environment, especially if it's a little bit more conservative, having uh, a closed toe pumps will definitely just finish that professional look. Um, so I've, I've said um, blazer, uh, black pencil skirt, black slacks, a white bottom shirt, a blouse. Um, I'd probably say, what else? I think little black dress, a black dress, any sort of style um, will suit and uh, probably a leather bag. Something something plain and and simple to to finish it off. That's a good point, actually, because, I mean, you can look absolutely fabulous and then have this shabby, crappy handbag that's your accessory and it doesn't need to be an expensive item. It can be very um, inexpensive, but the simpler, the better, I guess, is, is a good way to look at that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's for women. And what about for men? Um, a costume made suit. I, would, I can never stress that more. I have seen so many we- men wearing suit that doesn't 
fit them properly. So fit is everything. <laughs> and, and a little tip, boys, you don't have the same body shape as when you did 10 years ago you're just like women your body shape changes all the time so the sooner yeah. you accept that and maybe think about getting those suits those suits tailored it's like we think about having our portfolio shots done for professional purposes maybe once every two to three years perhaps the men need to have a think about having their suits retailored every two to three years because they're going to be judged by their suits aren't they Absolutely. And there is one study in the U.S. Um, where they had one man wearing a costume made suit and the other one was just off the rack. So the perception of people is um, the person that had a costume made suit looked like the way it communicated successful and had more money. And the person that was wearing an off the rack suit didn't look as successful. So again, this is again perception, isn't it? So what you see visually Right away, your brain would just jump into conclusion that this person is so and so. So it's really important to uh, pay attention to how you really want to be perceived. And that's perceived. not to say that as you relax around someone or you get to know people better, that you can't, you know, wear more comfortable clothing. What we're talking about here is that all important first impression. Um, is it? Is it necessary to have a really diverse wardrobe? So I mentioned before that I, I had a stylist like you come and help me and, and I've got this fabulous, you know, 10 or 12 pieces of clothing that are great, but I feel as though I'm recycling them a bit and using them over and over. Now, I'm not an advocate for fast fashion by any means, but is that enough? Is it enough to have, say, five or six outfits uh, that you can rotate through, is that okay? Um, or do you have to be conscious about wearing the same thing over and over again? Look, I would normally suggest having a uniform is quite good because it takes out the stress of what you have to wear when you wake up in the morning. So having like five, six outfits is actually good because you can just recycle them. And again, it depends on your audience. It depends who you're meeting. So you will have different types of outfit depending on the event. Now, can I ask you from a wardrobe perspective, um, as uh, when you're dealing with female and male clients, how can uh, someone, what, what should someone expect if they engage with a personal stylist to help them in, in this sort of first impressions, all important world? I think um, what I normally do with my clients, if we would have a consultation, I need to find out exactly um, what they do, what do they want to achieve? So looking at their clothing style, um, looking at their body shape, their color, their lifestyle. It's a holistic um, you know, assessment of who they are and how do they want to communicate themselves in the world. So now we're kind of like going into um, personal brand. So th there are a couple of factors that we need to consider before we put together a wardrobe. And, and one of the, well, you have to think about who the, who the end viewer is I guess is that right absolutely absolutely so you know as I said we look at uh, their personality um, their lifestyle their body shape body shape is everything I see so many people wearing the wrong clothes because they don't know what body shape they are and sometimes it doesn't really accentuate their asset so we want to make sure we wear the right styles so we feel good because when we see ourselves in the mirror we know that it suits us. <laughs> so body shape and coloring as well. Another thing that people don't even look into. You get to wear the right color. When you meet people for the first time, what do you notice? Color. It's so important actually because I've got two daughters who are approximately the same age and one has uh, very, very pale skin and dark hair like me and the other one has a slightly different coloring with blonde hair. They can't wear the same colours. They're getting to that point in their lives where they have to start looking at colours and whether they wash them out. Um, so sharing of clothes thing might be going out the window for them a little bit. They're not the cutesy little cutie pies anymore that can get away with any bright colour because that's an important factor as well. So I guess that's one way that a personal stylist can help you is understand your, is it the right thing to say, your colour wheel? What's the word? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, your color wheel, whether you're a cool tone or a warm tone, um, body shape, 
um, clothing personality type. So are you, um, what is your personality? Because that's, the difference between a personal stylist and an image consultant is a personal stylist will put you in clothes that they think looks good on you. An image consultant, which is myself, I will analyze your body shape, your color, your personality. So I would just, I, I need an assessment of that. And then we put together a ward, a cohesive ward that is dedicated to your um, personality, your lifestyle and what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, that's an important distinction. I hadn't really thought about the industry and how there is a, a, a clarity between who does what. And again, you know, important point about niching when you're in small business and what it is that you do. Um, Jennifer, we're going to take another quick break here on Small Biz Matters. And when we come back after the break, um, I just want to have a, a bit of a wrap up with you and talk to you about what you think the future looks like if we're all stuck inside and doing all these online meetings constantly. You're listening to Triple H 100.1 FM and across the community radio network. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Triple H 100.1 FM. You're listening to Small Beers Matters with Alexi Boyd. If you've missed any of today's program, you can catch up via smallbizmatters.com.au or iTunes or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can listen back to over 150 fantastic podcasts just like this one, helping you to get small business educated and learn how to work in your on your business rather than in it. I can't even get my tagline right, everyone, today. Now, today we are speaking with an expert in first impressions and um, uh, I guess an expert in helping us to navigate this weird world of online first impressions as well. Jennifer Austin is here with us on Small Biz Matters. Now, Jennifer, I want to talk to you about... um, how long it takes to unravel or undo the damage that a bad first impression can make? Well, a Harvard study had said that it takes a positive encounter to actually undo that bad first impression. So you really got to pay attention to that first encounter and make sure you nail it. Um, You still can, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. But the other um, tip that I have given to my clients, if they have made a bad impression and they were aware of it during that encounter, they can actually apologize. Because sometimes we are not in a good mood and we are in that interaction and you just know that you came across maybe um, not interested or arrogant. So you can just say, look, I'm not really having a good day. Yeah, it is possible to undo it there and then. But I suppose what you're saying is the longer that first impression lasts, the harder it is, the more you solidify it and the harder it is to undo um, the the bad first impression. And it makes sense because when you think about it, uh, if you've engaged with someone, say, on LinkedIn or on Twitter or on Facebook, and the impression that you've got from them from their comment that they've made might be take a while if you let that stew it, it can really um it, i'll give you a good example actually um someone commented on a newsletter that i sent out and wrote back only a few words and because of the mood that i was in i misinterpreted it. so he wrote back and said i'm w- i'm i'm going to be listening with bated breath and i wrote back and went <laughs> sorry are you being sarcastic do was that you know, almost a, a, my tone was, was that really necessary? Did you have to? But he wrote back again and said, oh, my goodness, no, I, I am actually looking forward to it. I just really like that expression. I didn't mean. And, and it, was, it was my issue because I was the one who misinterpreted what he said because I was having a bit of a negative moment and that popped into my emails. But if we hadn't have resolved that or if I hadn't made the, I guess, the it, the, the, it, you know, tried to improve that relationship there and then, that might have stuck with the relationship for quite a while. And that's why in what we're talking about, those first impressions are so important to nail. And then if you don't nail them, fix it. <laughs> exactly. If you have the opportunity to fix it right then and there, then do it. Because people will, we are very forgiving. If we know the person is really coming from a good place, you feel that in that energy. Because sometimes we're just not really in the mood to be in a good positive um, mood, especially if something had happened at home or, I mean, there's a lot of negative things that can happen that can go wrong. So, um, yeah. (laughs) Well, speaking of first impressions and this weird online world, if we keep having to do this potentially, and there will be industries out there who do for months on end, 
Do you think that will affect human relationships long term or do you think this is a positive that we need to change the way we perceive people online as first impressions? Where do you think it's going to head? Look, I think if, um, as you said, if this is the world that, that we're going to be living in where we're meeting people online, it will definitely change how people are being perceived because you don't have that, you know, physical um, energy that's present in front of you. So all you see is really the screen and it will be probably easier because you can control that. You can control your background. You can control your voice. You can control how you look like, like face to face, like the color that you're wearing. So it can transmit more um, good positive energy. So I think um, it's not really um, negative. I think um, it, we just, it could be positive in, in in a way wherein there's probably less things that we need to pay attention to yeah. <laughs> than when you meet somebody for the first time because you have to do the handshake and you have to do the posture. Like even like me, for instance, I'm sitting in a chair. What, what I've tried to do is I put some um, uh, pillow at the back so it pushes me to have a good posture. But when you are meeting somebody face to face you really need to put your shoulders back. You have to make an effort. I think it's less effort on screen. (laughs) Yeah, so that's definitely a positive because there's a lot of talk at the moment about us losing that human connection. But I agree with you. If anything, uh, because we have to make more of an effort, maybe that humanity can still be maintained even if it is through a screen. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. And we talked about that earlier, you know, your eye contact, your um, posture, even using your hands, your gesture. And really, when you're speaking to them, you're looking straight in that camera. So I look like I'm giving you a good eye contact. Yeah, you can't, you can't very, oh, I do have a habit here of being in the studio and actually kind of looking around the room to focus on what it is that I'm saying. That's not a great habit when I've got a Zoom call, I must say. Look, um, Jennifer, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today and, and giving us some really good tips on how to behave online versus in those, uh, in those, um, in those face-to-face moments, but how the, the importance of a first impression is still there, even in this online world that we live in. Tell us how we can find out a little bit more about you. You can find out a little bit about me um, in my LinkedIn. Um, I think it's attached um, in this video. My website is www.imageconcepts.com.au. And I also have Instagram, um, Instagram underscore AUS. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me any question. Would love to help. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You've been listening to Triple H 100.1 FM and Small Biz Matters with Alexi Boyd. Thanks for tuning in this week. Join us next week again for another couple of fantastic guests to keep working on your business and improving your small business education in this weird and wonderful time we live in. Don't forget, you can catch up via our website, smallbizmatters.com.au to find over 150 podcasts with accompanying information and find out more about all the fabulous guests that we've had online today. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you all next week.